Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Thomas. Today we're back here with the Nostalgia Critic, and today, well, we're off to see some dinosaurs at Steven Spielberg's Jurassic Park. Well, you guys know this movie, and well, congrats to a lot of people. <laughs> if not, well, you've probably been living under a rock. So, shall we take a look back and see if this film holds up after all this time? So be sure to like, subscribe for more. Hope you enjoy. Let's go check it out. D. <laughs> yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, fair. It's for this text. Hold on. Thank you. Off we go. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. Hey, Critic, remember, how you doing? So you don't have to. Jurassic fucking Park. Yep. When this film came out, people went nuts. Not only did it have groundbreaking CGI effects, mm. but it had action-packed suspense, a sense of awe and wonder, and just seemed gigantic. So when Ain't it was re-released in 3D recently, you bet your ass I got over to the theater to relive all those awesome memories. Mm -hmm. And how did it hold up? It was awesome! Hmm. But maybe not as awesome as I remember. <laughs> Don't get out! Hey, 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 hey! Good. <laughs> Boy. Like, let me explain. Well, Let's cook. I'm not saying it's a bad movie. Far from it. If anything, mm. it's held up extraordinarily well. Hmm. I'm just saying oh. that while we were so blown away by how huge it was, we might have overlooked some problems that we either didn't see or chose to ignore. I know something like Jurassic Park 3 is worse, and trust me, we'll get to that train wreck in our time. But it's still mm -hmm. an interesting journey, looking back so at something that was do. so groundbreaking and popular without the nostalgia goggles. Mm -hmm. So, let's take a look at an adventure 65 million years in the making, or... 3. This <laughs> is Jurassic, Jurassic Park. Park! Here we go! So we start out in Spielberg's favorite place to go in all of his movies, Spotlight Fetish Land. Yeah, I don't know if you've noticed, but this guy is obsessed with shining spotlights in your face as much as humanly possible. Oh, Every frame feels like a whimsical police interrogation. <laughs> they try to transport one of the highly intelligent raptors via portal cube, when of course, something goes wrong. <laughs> you would have secured that. You know, was Shoot there really no other way to get these things into their cages? Brute mm -hmm. force doesn't do much compared to common sense. I mean, True. look at the forklift. They could lift it just a little bit higher and boom, drop it in. Or tranquilizers, mm -hmm. why not tranquilizers? Couldn't they just knock these things out and then slip Whoop. them in that way? Or were the rats are too smart for that plan? Shoot ha! Huh? Run away in comedic fashion. <laughs> <laughs> Eh, yeah, that's movies for you. Common sense, out the window for you in action films. But, let's be real. If there actually was common sense in some films, there wouldn't be much action, was there? <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, he has a point. Like, you'd think they would've secured that better. Like, what it took was just, like, one ram and just, like, beep, and free human leaked. <laughs> Hello? No straps? Anything? Caramba! Yeesh. No wonder this thing's getting sued. Anyway. So they lose one of the workers in the attack as we cut to the prettiest mm -hmm. mullet-obsessed paleontologist to roam the Earth. They're led by Dr. Grant, played by Hi, I Grant. swear I'm not a New Zealander, Sam Neill. Look at the half moon sure, shape. You wanna have one of those? A flock of birds evading a predator. And Dr. Settler, his girl... Fiance? Fiance? Fuck, buddy. Played by Laura Dern. <laughs> this is who seems fiance. to always suffer from terminal mumbling. Infections in your skin. Yeah, look at this. Small versions of adult. 
Okay, I think that might be me. <laughs> Did she eat an ice cream scoop of peanut butter before coming to the set? Well, maybe dinosaurs. Oh, that sounds. I sound like that, and I don't even have peanut butter. And they do with reptiles. Look at the vertebrae, full of air sacs and hollows, just like a bird. And even the word raptor means bird of prey. Raptors were very aware of this when they were naming themselves. Cool, cool. That doesn't look very scary. More like a six-foot turkey. A turkey, huh? So he scares the little kid by showing him something he never thought he'd see on a hunt for dinosaur bones. A dinosaur bone! Ah! You want to have one of those? I don't want that kid, but a breed of child Dr. Grant could be intriguing. But the work is interrupted by John Hammond. Blow me oh. blood pipes! Who offers to fund their dig further if they offer outside opinion on his new park due to the loss of the worker earlier? I mean... Let's face it, in your particular field, you're the top minds. Yes! You have well, no idea safety. how computers work and you study ancient plant life. Clearly nobody would be more qualified. Except the oh, park safety guy. Sheesh. Both of you. I can tell instantly about people. It's a gift. Are you sure about that? Obviously, he took that into consideration when he hired this guy. Dennis Nidri played by Wayne Knight before his heart decided he wanted to live. Who we see is betraying John Hammond by handing over the dinosaur embryos to... Mm -hmm. Evil dinosaur makers, I guess. In it's order to get more money. And you might notice one of the main problems with the first third of this movie. It focuses a great deal amount of time somehow hastily rushing a ton of exposition. On delivery 50,000 more for each viable embryo. We are facing a $20 million lawsuit. There's a particular pebble in my shoe represents my investors. 7 o'clock tomorrow night on the East Dock. 48 hours from now, if they're not convinced, I'm not convinced. Says that they insist on outside opinion. But it's all right. To account for that, they make the characters' motivations and story arcs disgustingly simple. Even down to dressing them in Care Bear colors so you can easily remember which one is which. Which one's Grant? Oh, he's the one in blue. Which one's Hammond? Oh, he's the one in white. Which one's the a-hole everyone will fall in love with until they realize he's just gonna do that one note for the rest of his life until they want to dig their brains out with a fork because he's so goddamn irritating? That's the darkly dressed evil one known as Jeff Goldblum. Hi, Goldblum. Chaos theory. <laughs> really? Shoot him! <laughs> Shoot Stop working! Yeah, Goldblum, or the Wizard of Oz, as I like to call him, uh -oh. wasn't a complete unknown before this uh -oh. flick, but he became a household name after it became a hit, and people fell in love with his performance. And at the time, it was kind of charming. People have never heard this kind of performance in a blockbuster film before. We're going to conduct an experiment. It should be still. The car's bouncing up and down, but that's our case. But once we discover that he fell in love with his performance, even more than we fell in <laughs> love with his performance, to a point where he never wanted to leave that performance, we do end up asking ourselves, how the fuck did we ever like this performance to begin with? Uh, yeah, I mean. Um, um, Did you? <laughs> Stop! Jeez. There it is. Yeah, honestly, you think you would have been like, okay, yo, turn it down, man. Sheesh. I think after a while, I'd be like, okay, dude, you gotta turn it down, cause I'm getting annoyed. But if I'm on set, I probably would be annoyed. What about you guys, huh? Anyway, next. Here it comes. Here comes the you island. Are getting this theme song out of your head. your head. It will be in your brain for weeks or till you're dead. The full 50 miles of perimeter fence are in place. And the concrete moats and the motion center tracking systems. Donald's dear boy, relax. The only thing we don't have is security in case a storm comes or the power goes out. But we have this guy for that. So we good, we good. Spared no expense. Shut about that? Down, John. <laughs> in 48 hours, I'll be accepting your apologies. So they arrive at the star attraction, Laura Dern mugs for the trailer, and we get our first look at Gertie. It's, it's, it's a dinosaur. A dinosaur. Uh -huh. Welcome. Welcome. To Jurassic Park. They're moving in herds. They do move in herds. And they're improving. Really? Hmm. That's the big teardropper line? Kind of random, isn't it? I mean, I mean this is kind of like was looking out over the herd, herd and saying, They eat their own shit. <laughs> they do eat their own shit. Oh, 
much in this case. Damon takes them to the visitor center to show them how they're made. Apparently it was done through the miracle of cloning. One of the many illegal processes I'm sure went into making this place a reality. DNA strand, like me, is a blueprint for building a living thing. And sometimes... Oh, spotlight fetish. I don't care if I'm the only director in the world who has it. I will make you a star. A hundred million years ago, there were mosquitoes, just like today. After biting a dinosaur, the mosquito would land on the branch of a tree dinosaur. and get stuck in the sap. The tree sap would get hard and become fossilized, just like a dinosaur bone, preserving the mosquito inside. Okay. Even if you were to buy this half-baked science that even Donatello would call a little suspicious, what are the chances of finding tons of mosquitoes not only millions of years old, not only have bitten every popular dinosaur to be marketed, but also all happen to get stuck in tree sap? Did they all happen to be in the same nest during the great sapalanche of Gajillion BC? Mm. Oh, well, it took all day, but I think we bit every popular and most marketable dinosaur known to man. That's why I love binge drinking with you guys. Mm, now let's rest our little tummies before we puke up whatever's left of them. Uh... Sapalanche! A sapalanche is coming to destroy the town! <laughs> get moving. Go get help. Oh, come on, man. I go can't move. Help. No, I can't move. Oh, you need to go and get help. Come on, I mean, man. I'm gonna die. I'm You're totally gonna die. Gonna he wants to die. You he wants to die, die right now. You want me to just help. explode Are if I move? Here? I mean, is that what yeah, you want? Is that what you want from me? I mean, you want me to die? Fine, fine, fine. I'll go get help. Too late. I wonder if I'm a blood donor. Yeah, we get to whimsical moment number I'm not even gonna bother counting as we see one of the baby dinosaurs Three? being born. Aw, cute. What species is this? It's a, a velociraptor. Hmm. You bred raptors. Ah, so he can't identify the dinosaur from his trademark make kid wet pants speech even when he's holding the damn thing right in his motherfucking hands. Great job picking those top minds you were talking about there, Hammond. Spare no expense. Spare no expense. This brings us to the projector room, where I'm sure Spielberg is projecting right now with how much his spotlight fetish is being fueled. Oh, so backlit. Oh, so illuminating. Oh, I could hump the white outline that it makes on the side of their heads. Oh. And we can charge anything we want. 2,000 a day, 10,000 a day, and people will pay it. This park was not built to cater only for the super rich. Everyone in the world has the right to enjoy these animals. Yeah, everyone should be allowed to fly their personal helicopters to their Hawaiian islands after getting storm insurance. We're looking after the little guy. <laughs> but go. Yeah, even I could see that's a recipe for disaster. Like, you'd think they would have brought it over to mainland or something. You know, a little more room. But I guess with the uh, ocean, they probably wouldn't be swimming off to soar. <laughs> eh, to each their own, as they say. But what about you guys? If you had to make a dinosaur park, where would you place it? I mean, no. I don't know. Probably away from, like, people, but he's enough for travel. You know, I'm just saying. Gotta think of price. Anyway. Oblum, ah, uh, ah, uh, is not happy. You stood on the shoulders of geniuses uh, to accomplish something as fast as you could, and before you even knew what you had, you, you patented it, and packaged it, and slapped it on a plastic lunchbox, and now you're selling it. You want to sell it. Well, wow. That was an excellent argument against the lost world. I mean, yeah. everything mm -hmm. you said in there, I totally agree. And three world, Fallen Kingdom, spot of Dominion, in the pot. take a pick. <laughs> Kids. Oh good, the appetizers arrived. Now we can start our tour with the latest and greatest in high-tech ingenuity. It's an interactive CD-ROM! Holy shit, it's packed in CD-ROM! Oh my god, tell me it doesn't have X-Wing! Tell me it doesn't have X-Wing! <laughs> Yahoo! The appropriate information will be automatically selected. Welcome to Jurassic Park. What do they got in there, King Kong? Oh, come on, you could have worked in three more uhs into that sentence. What uh, they uh, got uh, in there, uh, King uh, Kong. But sadly, the tour doesn't seem to be going very well, as none of the dinosaurs show up to be seen. Odd. Where'd they go? Hmm. Hmm. It's okay because Goldblum uses his traditional pickup tricks that always seem to get him women at TGI Fridays. Tiny variations uh, 
the, the orientation of the hairs on your hands. Yeah, hey, look at this. Um, the amount of blood distending your vessels, imperfections in the skin. Imperfections in the skin? Microscopic, microscopic. Oh, my God, it's like the new NBC sitcom, Rambles and Mumbles. Yeah, pretty much. One's a horny chaotician. The other's a giggling plant expert who doesn't want to get married but surprisingly wants kids for some reason. Hey, Together, hey, your mind they up. make the greatest couple nobody can understand or want to listen to since Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker. Rambles and Mumbles, coming soon to NBC. Never mind. Wow. That was fast. <laughs> they get out of the car and stumble across a sick triceratops, but Sattler is determined to figure out what's causing the sickness. Now, in reality, this scene serves no purpose to the plot apart from separating Sattler from the group. And let's be honest, it True. only exists so kids can giggle when he says this line. That is one big pile of shit. Your career in a nutshell. Thank you. But Nidri has to hurry with those Sorry, embryos or else the obvious video that everyone in the audience said was an obvious video, seriously, you couldn't crop that shot just a notch, says the storm is coming and that the ship has to leave with everyone on it. Oh, look how lens flary it is. Oh yeah. So he says the power's gonna go in and out, thinking he can make it back in time before anybody notices. But he gets lost, resulting in all the power shutting down and the cars getting stuck in the worst place possible. Next to the T-Rex. He ain't coming. And this leads to easily the best character in the whole movie. The absolute star of the whole goddamn thing. I'm a motherfucking T-Rex! Yep! The T-Rex! I'm a motherfucking T-Rex! I'm a motherfucking T-Rex! <laughs> This badass mother owns it. This scene is about as perfectly paced and perfectly suspenseful as a scene can get. I'm a motherfucking T-Rex! I'm a motherfucking T-Rex! I think everything about her can be summed up in that one awesome roar. Oh god, I've been that roar every single one would declare her ability of just owning this goddamn movie. The yeah, awesome! I had been right all the time. <laughs> That's it. But things get real when bulgy eyes and young Ferris Bueller are being attacked. Stop shooting that shit. Stop that. Come here. <laughs> Woo! Uh, are you? A little comedy for me. The go for it. Oh boy. Maybe not that. Hey, hey. Come here, boy. No. The present pants work down. Yeah, um, what was the line that Hammond said earlier? In 48 hours, I'll be accepting your apologies. I'm sorry I ever took you on as a client. Ah! Yeah, pretty much. Mm. Lawyer. Tastes like deep-rooted insecurity <laughs> and bitterness. Grant gives the bulgy eyes out, but young Ferris Bueller is still stuck in the car, and the T-Rex throws it over. Well, the motherfucking T-Rex! Ouch. Oh, I'm sorry, okay. I need a minute to recover from such awesomeness. Play the music! <laughs> Yeah, I probably wouldn't need a minute to. Like, what? Oh, jeez. So, anyone got chest stairs there? Let me know. Well, thanks was loose. Thanks a lot, chubby. Not me. You know what I mean. Yeesh. The IT guy. I think we'd be like, oh, just leave it alone. Boy. Anyway. Yeah. You good? 
We do each other good, T Rex. We uh, do each other real good. Why are you gonna voice quarter now? Now I'm, I'm kinda hungry for pizza. Uh, yeah. Back to the story. Nidra gets Thank his you. card stuck and does his best to pull it out. There's the rope. Bring your legs to the back of was that a cartoon sound effect? Yeah. Did Schumacher take over for one second of filming? <laughs> yeah, he did. Well, he comes across what? a nasty visitor. Or at least she becomes nasty when the prop guy pulls the strings. <laughs> yep, just ruined that scene forever for ya. <laughs> Grant manages to get young Ferris Bueller out of the tree and tries making their way back. Meanwhile, Sattler comes across Goldblum just in time to partake in another badass T-Rex scene. Go, 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 go. Eat those bitches! <laughs> Don't forget the mirror scene that proportionally makes no sense, but it's still so goddamn cool. There you go. Damn, that <laughs> so doesn't add up. Sheesh. Hey, look on the bright uh. side. At least you gave Toy Story 2 something to parody. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, look, Brachiosaurus. The next morning, Grant and the kids come across some friendly Brachiosauruses. I have to admit, this is one of the lesser effects in the movie. I don't know, maybe because it's at a profile, but does anyone else think it looks like just a giant, expensive sock puppet? Can I touch it? <laughs> just think of it as kind of a big cow. <laughs> like just cows. watch it. Well, I know we sounded weird to me too. Not that you can make the phrase, I like cow, sound all that natural, but it goes pretty Lucas there, doesn't it? I like cows. But I don't like, I like sand. Cow. Oh, oh. I like snot. <laughs> Suddenly, Grant discovers the dinosaurs are breeding, which seems impossible seeing how all of them are females. So they mutated the dinosaur genetic code and blended it with that of frogs. Now, some West African frogs have been known to spontaneously change sex from male to female in a single sex environment. Funny how this is common knowledge to me, and yet none of the highly paid scientists who put this together ever considered this a possibility. Spent no yeah, expense. But at least they're doing the research. Like, a lysine contingency. Check. Lysine contingency is intended to prevent the spread of the animals in case they ever get off the island. Dr. Wu inserted a gene that creates a single faulty enzyme in protein metabolism. The animals can't manufacture the amino acid lysine. Unless they're completely supplied with lysine by us, they slip into a coma and die. Oh, great! Why don't you do that? That is absolutely out of the question. Okay. Seriously? Guess we can just add this to the grocery list of scenes that go nowhere in this movie. Yeah, really think about it. There's quite a few, aren't there? Hammond not showing up because his daughters get a divorce? Goldblum hitting on Sattler and her fuck buddy finding out? Digging through dino shit? The Lysine? Those weird fucking goggles? What was the point of all those? Spared no expense. You spared purpose, though. Lots and lots of purpose. But I've had... Yeah, I mean... Even I'm like, dude, why would you even have that? Either just gonna be like, not gonna use it. Like, and at that point, I feel like you still have the materials. You can start over. Like, dude, just hit it and just be done. You already lost a lot of lives. Just start over and just figure out what to do. Whoops. Ugh. Jesus Christ. Sometimes you just gotta think. Hammond, you okay up here? I swear, you're not senile. Added with these motherfucking dinosaurs on this motherfucking island agrees to shut down the system and restart it. Oh, why don't I just shoot all my movies at a lighthouse? I can write that in somehow. It's don't. off. It worked. What do you mean it worked? Everything's still off. Well, maybe the shutdown tripped the circuit breakers. All we have to do is turn them back on. Where are the breakers? Maintenance here, the other end of the compound. Three minutes, I can have power back on the entire park. Well, now, look, just to be safe, I want everybody in the emergency bunker. Uh, wait, did I just hear that right? You're sending the only computer guy on the island outside with the killer dinosaurs alone? Huh, can't see anything going wrong uh, there. Something went wrong. Again, logic just seems to have gone to die. You just stroll down the road. Oh, you mean you like just let Samuel Jackson do it? stroll down the road? Oh yeah, the black dude can handle his own, but when the pretty white lady has to go, pff, hell no, suit up, it's too dangerous out there. Even Hammond Seriously. can't bear to see her go where they easily toss the black guy. It ought to be me really going. Why? Well, I'm a, uh, and you're a, um, uh... Bro. Look, we can discuss sexism and survival situations when I get back. Uh, what about racism? Because again, you let the tech guy go. to kill him? Have a vagina. 
So Seems Sandler close. makes it to the building and turns on the power just as young Ferris Bueller is climbing the fence. Hey, you couldn't they use climb? Uh oh. One. It's dropped, it's dropped! Oh! Also, again, that line. No, Tim. Well, at least we know what we're having for dinner. Oh, Timmy! Yes, thank God! <laughs> Hi, Timmy, welcome back. Settler, on the other hand, could be better. Hi! Oh, Mr. Arnold. Why did nobody tell me it wasn't just a stroll down the road? <laughs> She gets out of yeah, the Velociraptor Dundee. Seems to have his own problems to deal with. Yeah, never go alone with Dinos. Clever girl. Waiting for me to turn around to acknowledge your intelligence. Clever, gloating, egotistical girl. Ah! Yeah, that's fine. Yep, if you ever noticed, these things are damn smart. Even when Grant leaves the kids alone in a building with no locked doors. That's Odd. stupid. They manage to open up the doors, corner them in the kitchen, and yet somehow never manage to get these twerps! Yeah, you go on and on about how smart they are and how they can even track diehard hunters, yet two little kids with literally no way out give them the slip? I mean, couldn't they just be like... Oh, Stephanie, could you be awesome and stand guard at the door while I sniff our dinner out? Of course, Vanessa! Thank you! No Got it. prob! <laughs> Hey, Andrew. did you hear about Andrea's spontaneous change of sex? Yeah, that was weird. So like I said, kid. the kids get away and meet up with Grant and Sattler, who get them to the control room to turn everything back on, including the door locks. Which was kind of stupid, hooking up everyday door locks to their computer. Should have thought that one through. It's bad. No Oops. expense. <laughs> So Sorry, hit the guy, damn button. To all the power to the park because they clearly went into great detail about what a computer expert she is. I'm a hacker. See, it's up to young Ferris Bueller to hand Sattler the gun. <laughs> hand Sattler the, the gun. gun. <laughs> or just let her do it. Cher doesn't need a massage as much as Sattler needs the gun. That gun. Assistance needed two steps behind you. Boys Ew, hello! Are you blind? You. Dad, what are you doing? No, oh, well, they got the power back on, and at least they have more ammo they can use for later. <laughs> gonna come through the glass! <laughs> or miss a whopping four times. What, are the Raptors <laughs> agents from the Matrix? How the hell can you miss four times hitting a dinosaur? I don't know. I mean, they're not that small. I mean, look at them. They climb Probably even hit with a shotgun. The Flintstones eat at the end credits Whee! when it seems like they're cornered. How the hell could they get out of this one? T Rex. Ah! Woo -hoo! T Rex. Got him. God damn it! I love you, T Rex. You are the most awesome goddamn thing. Even though it makes no sense how they couldn't hear you come in, even though your footsteps always make the ground shake, you just gave the most epic, awesome whoa, go, whoa, 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 whoa. this movie deserved. Woohoo! Yeah. And... Oh, no. <laughs> All she needs is a mic drop. I swear, that's the only thing missing. She fucking owns everything that ever existed. She just needs a mic drop. Yep, done. And thus, they all seem to make it out okay. Uh, aside from a few people. Mammoths. Ugh. Next time, definitely mammoths. Oy. What's the to bring mammoths back? I don't know. I missed it. Aw, my touching story arc is complete. Let's split in the third film. Okay. Yeah, it sounds all right. <laughs> And the moral of the story, kids, when a white Scottish man offers you to see his park, you say no. No kidding. And that's Jurassic Park. It's got its flaws, even some major, major flaws, but I'm sorry, it's still fucking awesome. Yeah. The effects for the most part still look great. The story is not devoid of intelligent conversation. The characters, though maybe a little too simplistic at times, are still likable. And it still has the size and scope to not only enchant, but also scare. It's suspenseful and fun, despite that there's some typical Spielberg moments, both good and bad. Not to mention just the straight up awesome factor. It knows it's what to dinosaurs. give the audience and just how else? much suspension of disbelief we can lend to still enjoy it. 
As yeah. action-packed adventures go, this is one that is still a lot of fun and very impressive. Amen. And of course, let's be honest here, it made the T-Rex a motherfucking star again. Drop that my bitch! Thank you. I'm just out to try to remember you don't have to. T-Rex! Thank you. Motherfucking T-Rex! T-Rex. Yeah, nice job of T-Rex though. Uh, yep, yeah, you ain't wrong. Storm may be bad, but come on. It's freaking dinosaurs. You gotta love it. <laughs> well, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. See ya.